we experienced every single kind of bill that you could experience as far as what other bands we're going to play with. You know, we played with the hardcore scene, we played with the hip hop scene, we played with the punk rock scene and the, the indie scene. And, and I guess we kind of accredit a lot to all of those different scenes. You know, you'd be surprised how much we draw from the hardcore scene, you know, as far as how, how we put on a show, how, we're, how we perform and kind of lay everything out for our, you know, with our music when we play. And it's, it's interesting to see, you know, how all these, all these scenes and all these bands that we kind of grew up playing with um, have influenced us. And I don't know, I, I guess we're influenced by our hometown for sure. You know, they, they deserve a shout out, I guess, Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever played a show, I didn't really know how I was supposed to act. You know, I, I, what I did is I just looked down at my keyboard and I played the show and I executed the songs, thinking like, there you go, everybody, there are the songs I wrote. And uh, I remember walking off stage, if you would even call it a stage, and thinking like, that felt awful. And so the next time I played, which happened to be the exact same coffee shop, I decided to kind of let myself physically kind of go in the same way that when I'm in my basement demoing out songs and writing songs like I, I really do get into it and it's kind of embarrassing actually I'm totally by myself I got my headphones on and I'm just sweating you know really getting into the music and uh, and I decided to you know really let that be who I was on stage instead and I remember that first show that I decided to do that my mom and all of her friends came up to me like, are you okay? Like, is everything all right? Like, do we need, does Tyler need to see someone? I remember my mom asking me that. Um, and I was like, no, actually I feel great. Like I get to manifest what those songs are saying on stage. And uh, I'm just lucky I found, you know, another guy who, who believes in doing that, you know, hitting his drums as hard as he can to, sh to you know, if it's not, to put on a show, it's it's for himself because we get something out of playing music. We truly do, and I'm we're just we're just pumped that we have some songs that are that are dramatic and dynamic enough to kind of keep everyone's attention. One of mine is a song called House of Gold that I play on my ukulele. I wrote um, actually for my mom, and you know just talking about talking about where we're from and she, you know our parents and our our families are just such big supporters. I, I got to play that for her in front of 6,000 people in my hometown a few weeks ago, so that was a cool feeling. Yeah, the, I think the, <clears throat> the cool thing about these songs is that, that we both, we, you know, we play them all the, you know, night after night, and, um, and I, I, I imagine that sometimes, sometimes bands can get tired of that, especially after doing it for years, and, and we haven't been doing it that long, but we've played these songs a lot of times, and um, but we still really connect with these songs every time, and, and there's a song uh, called Trees that we play. It's usually usually one of the last songs that we'll do, and so by that time I'm always you know, totally totally exhausted just from just playing as, as hard as I can for an hour or whatever. But there's something about that song, you know, live that always kind of like I always feel refreshed when it comes on, like totally like beginning of the show. Um, physically and mentally and spiritually even and, um, and I don't know what it is but I, I love I always look forward to playing that song every night we went to a costume shop sometimes before shows and in uh, the first time we went in we found a skeleton like a skeleton like hoodie and uh, and a gorilla costume and so we'd travel around and play shows and and you know for one song, he'd be wearing the skeleton thing, and then near the end of the thing, I'd come out in like a full gorilla costume. So like in mid-July, August, like the hottest time of the year. Outside. Um, outside sometimes, I almost passed out. I mean, we almost lost him in this gorilla suit. Which actually is a, it's, a, it's kind of like on my bucket list to maybe pass out during a show. And I don't know why, but I think just because maybe I play so hard that I. It's just super punk rock. Yeah, it's the punk rock in me. Um, but it really, it kind of just started out as um, just a way for people, because like, you know, now we kind of come out, the first song, and both of us wearing the skeleton hoodies, and it kind of, 
in a way forces people to just be like, what is, what is that? What's happening up there? And sometimes after shows, people come up to us and, and say, oh, this is our first time ever seeing you. And, I, and at first I was scared by the skeleton thing, which is <laughs> kind of funny, because um, it's not the intention to be scary or, or dark or anything like that. Uh, but then they're like, but I was hooked after that, and so it's kind of the goal. And I, I still don't know if I, I don't, I'm not like trained or anything. I just kind of, I think we were playing a show in, Col in Columbus, one of our first ones. And it was in a gymnasium where they have like the mats for um, whatever they do. <laughs> mats Gymnastics or something? Gymnastics. And uh, we were just kind of like, we were messing around before the show. We were playing basketball and stuff and we pulled out these mat mats and I wanted to just do a backflip off of the stage for no reason <laughs> to impress my friends. <laughs> I had never done it before though, so I was like, can you help me? Yeah. <laughs> I want to impress you, but I need your help. Yeah, so, um, which is really impressive. Yeah, so I think Tyler, I think he like spotted me and I landed on my knees or something and, and then I tried it again and, and landed, it was a bit shaky, but you know. So then I was kind of thinking about it and I was just like, I want to do this during a show at some point. And then um, we were doing a, one of our big hometown shows, actually the, the one that kind of like caught the industry's attention and so we we're gonna kind of like save it up for then like this would be a cool revealing stunt and so as we were rehearsing you know in like a week leading up to that show most of the time of rehearsal was like trying to nail this like backflip yeah whatever. we didn't really rehearse like our songs our songs at all it's like mostly back. Yeah. Um, and so I, I and so it's pretty much just been a thing I guess ever since then and there's been times where we'll go and play and a bar or something where the ceilings are like right here and I'm like I don't know what to do here and and sometimes I'll just like roll off of the piano and just, yeah. as a joke or hang off of the um, whatever um, so I don't know it's it's uh, it's something that I, I enjoy doing because I, I get scared every night that I'm gonna fall yeah. on my head or something but we, we want to show an audience people who come out to see us or just happen to be there when we're playing we, you know, we, we're going to work hard for you, and we're, we're willing to, you know, put ourselves maybe even in physical harm, <laughs> you know. We've never really been to Weenie Roast before. We've heard about it. Um, so we're going to go in not really knowing exactly what to expect, but and we kind of like that, you know. It'll, it'll be challenging. We don't really know um, what the atmosphere will be like, but... We're going to we're going to put everything we have into a performance, you know, and and we'll utilize whatever is around us, whether it be the audience is into it or, or the stage or, or whatever it is. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna milk that thing for everything that it's worth. So I hope I hope people are are there to catch our set.